Hello everyone and welcome back to our study series in Nehemiah. Today we are looking at Nehemiah chapter 7 verses 1 to 3. So what's happened so far? Well, despite several attacks from the God-haters, the wall at Jerusalem has now finally been completed. Hallelujah. Nehemiah has finished the job that he had come to do. And as we looked at last time, he is now beginning to build a society behind the wall, focusing on the basic human needs of protection, safety, uh, food and supplies, community, and most importantly, worship. Uh, the needs that were highlighted by the famous psychologist Maslow, of whom we looked at in more detail together in our last study. But these most basic needs for a society to function, these most important tasks that would hold and bind the community together were, of course, beyond one man's ability to manage. And we can see from our verses today uh, that Nehemiah feared constant attack from God's enemies uh, day and night. He was constantly worrying about the people that God had given him. Um, he was constantly uh, concerned about how to feed them and clothe them and provide for them. Um, and if Nehemiah had to do this all on his own, he would have gone mad. Um, so he delegated. Um, he delegated the job to two individuals that we see in our reading today, Hanani and Hananiah. Um, they were instructed to take charge of Jerusalem. Interestingly, their names mean gracious and God has favoured. And Nehemiah chose these two people to help him with the daily management of the city because of two qualities that they shared. The first quality is integrity and the second quality is that they feared God. They both had integrity and they feared God. They were both reliable and reverent. So what do these qualities mean in real life? Well, having integrity means that your backstage matches that of your front stage. That the impression that you like to give people at church on a Sunday morning about yourself is indeed who you are Monday to Saturday, at home and at work and behind closed doors. Friends, integrity does not mean perfection. Integrity means honesty. It means sincerity. It means consistency. It means being trustworthy and reliable and open, open with God and open with church. It means living a life where your backstage matches that of your front stage. And Hananiah and Hananiah, they got the top jobs here, uh, not because they were perfect people, but because Nehemiah knew what he was getting from them both, because they were people of integrity. They were honest, they were sincere, they were reliable. Their backstage matched their front stage. I hope that makes sense. The second quality that they shared was that they feared God. They feared God's wrath, they feared God's justice, and they knew that God was always watching them. So they obeyed God, they followed his precepts and they lived out his teaching. So not only were their backstage and front stage matching, but you, we can assume that, that both were in order because of their obedience to God. They were quite happy to tear the curtain from the front stage and the backstage because they had nothing to hide because they followed God's teaching and feared God. And such qualifications that we see here, integrity and being uh, God-fearing, 
They are matched in the New Testament when Paul lays down instructions for Timothy on, on who to appoint to be elders and deacons within the church. In 1 Timothy 3 verses 1 to 16, um, which I encourage you all to go and read after this study, uh, the instructions uh, there speak more specifically into one's life and behaviour and in how to manage your households. The logic being that if you can't look after your own house, you certainly can't be trusted to look after the church. Um, but these characteristics outlined here in um, 1 Timothy 3 uh, by Paul in his letter, um, they can be summarised by Nehemiah but by these two qualities, integrity and God-fearing. And that's what we're looking out for as a church. Now, some of you may be hearing this and thinking, you know, this is very interesting, John, but this teaching does not apply to me because I'm not looking to rule Jerusalem. Um, neither am I looking to become an elder or a deacon at my local church. Well, perhaps not. But if you are a Christian, I need to remind you that you are God's representative where he has placed you. You are the church to the world. And the best way to show the love of God to the world is by living with such integrity and such reverence that people can see God in you. It is to be reliable. It is to be God-fearing. And we need to pray together that God will give us the grace and the power to live such lives so that we can be salt and light in our communities that he has placed us.